Today, we're doing part two of the four-part video series on how to systemize your finances for your bar and restaurant. Today, we're doing weekly sales and prime cost report. Let's do it. Hey there, how you doing? Dave Allred, the real barman here from barpatrol.net. I'm back again. Welcome to part two of the four part video series in which each video I show you how to use a template that's gonna help you systemize your bar, systemize your finances on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. If you haven't seen video one, that is the daily sales and cash reconciliation spreadsheet. Go check that out because that's the daily. We start with daily, then we move to weekly, then we move to monthly. The daily uh, cash report is gonna show you your daily sales. You can record and track them as well as make sure that your cash lines up. So go make sure you go watch that first. Today we're doing the weekly sales and prime cost report. So the weekly sales are going to act very similarly to the ones you're already entering into your daily. So you're gonna understand that worksheet, but we've also added a prime cost uh, indicator on the bottom so you can see where you're at on a weekly basis. Most people only do this on a monthly basis and then they can't identify problems in a shorter time span to see what's really going on. And then as I mentioned in video one, if you go to therealbarman.com and go to the resources page, you can get all of these templates there. So let's jump right into it. So here is the prime cost and Weekly, I'm sorry, the weekly sales and prime cost report. This is a blank version right here. This is what you will get when you download. You notice it's yellow over here. So this looks very similar to the daily one you'll notice. So this is all in yellow because it means you don't need to use it. And in, in the first template we use, the daily one, you have AM and you had PM. If you wanted to break it down that way, you'll notice it says NA right here, which means it's just not applicable. You don't need it. All we need is one line of data here. You don't need the registers. I just didn't want to change forms. I wanted it to be very familiar, but all you need to do is fill in this one column because we're doing the entire week. So you need to go to your POS again, get the time range for the week, find out where your sales are broken down by all of these categories here and as well as your comps and your discounts. How, again, again, however you wanna name them is just fine. Just make sure they're consistent from day to day and week to week. So again, I already have one filled out, so we don't, you don't have to watch me uh, spend two hours filling one out. So we already have numbers on here. So let me show you just really quickly, this is almost review for you if you watch the first video, but again, you're just gonna get all those numbers, food, non-alcoholic, liquor, bottled beer, draft beer, wine. This is all great to break down. You need to see what you're selling in each individual category so you can get your cost percentages for each individual category to see what needs fixing because each liquor, beer, wine has its own cost percentage. And inside the profit loss statement, we have the industry standards right next to each of those categories so you can see what they're supposed to be. Plus, if you sign up for the course, you get the bar and restaurant industry standards sheet that I hand out. You get that download and they're all built right in there beyond just uh, food and liquor. We also have paper products. We have everything as it should be so you can compare your bar and restaurant and see where you're at and how far you need to go to get where you need to be to make more profits. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so let's jump right in this. We're starting over here. Again, review. Get your weekly sales, put it all right here. These are your total gross sales. The totals are gonna be over here. It's gonna match exactly the same because we're not doing different registers or AM, PM. Now we come down, we go back, we, we enter all of our discounts for the entire week. Once again, there's your total discounts. Your net sales are the 30,000 minus the 1787. You're gonna get that number down here, total net sales, once again, this template, everything's in green instead of blue like the daily one. These are all formulas. You don't need to fill in any of this in. It's all going to fill in automatically. So let's scroll down. I'm going through that really quick because you've already seen this in the first video. You're going to have your gross here. Make sure again that you enter credit card tips and play credit card tips right there. Uh, I didn't put a sales tax in right here, but make sure you enter your sales tax. Uh, it looks like I was filling it out too quickly. And then once again, your payouts for the entire week all listed right there. And then you're gonna come through and enter all of your settlements, just like you did in the other one. All right here, and then you're gonna, I just made it match evenly, I don't wanna do a fake over under, so I had everything match perfectly. Uh, you probably won't match perfectly for the entire week of sales, but hopefully it's pretty close. 
uh, that you don't have a very big variance there. And then again, this is your sales per labor hour. If you enter your total sales for the week, it'll tell you how much, how much sales you're doing per hour, kind of a fun metric. That's optional, but you can enter that to kind of see what's going on. Now we get into the prime cost report section. This is very valuable. I will preach prime cost through here and throughout the course. Uh, what prime cost is, I have a section that shows you exactly what prime cost is. We have a video on how to figure uh, prime cost percentage, but it's, it's just your COGS, your cost of goods sold, plus your labor, and that includes hourly managers, benefits, and everything. Uh, that's it. That's the cost for both. And to figure the percentage, you just divide it by your total sales. It does it all for you here. So you'll notice this is green, which means you don't have to fill this out. That's a lot less work for you. You're filling all this in up here, and it just fills in your sales down here for you. So you're good. That number's the same as the number up there for your net sales. Now you got your cost of goods sold. You need to enter these for the entire week. What did you spend? You need to get your invoices out. You need to track this stuff. This will be on your daily sales report. If you don't have it tracked anywhere else, just add those numbers up. You just gotta add seven numbers together. You'll have them all. You need to sit down on a weekly basis. Don't get lazy here. Sit down on a weekly basis, on a Tuesday, a Monday, a Sunday, whatever day you do it, and do your weekly sales and prime cost report. All you gotta do is sit down, get into your POS, get the report. This will take you 15 minutes. You'll be done for the week. Systemize. Don't wonder where you're at. So you'll come in here, you'll enter all of your cost of goods sold, broken down by category again, and then you're going to enter your labor. Okay, so here's your sales, I'm sorry, your salary, your hourly employees, your payroll taxes and benefits, and then we just have an other column uh, for if you want to group some things together. So we only have four lines of data here, so if you need to group some things together that aren't broken down, you can just put it right there. So the way you're going to figure salary, these this is preset, right? You pay your managers what you pay. It's not like hourly employees where you're going to cut people off the floor and their hours and their wages are going to... Let's see, I have this number written down here. What this is, the, the way to figure salary is to take what you pay them and, on a monthly basis or weekly and divide by 12 or divide by 52. 52 is a little more accurate. So this is actually, if you multiplied this number by 52, you would get 149,396. That's what this bar pays its management for salary for the entire year. So if you divide 140, 149,396 by 52 weeks, this is what you get. This is what we're paying on a weekly basis. And then there's the hourly employees, payroll taxes and benefit, all included in labor. And now we have our cost of goods sold, plus our labor, and there's our total labor, total, total cost of goods sold. And what we get down here is a cost percentage. I'm sorry, the cost and the percentage for prime cost. So it's taken this number and it's divided it by the sales and it does it for you. They're at 68% right here. Not god awful, but you can see by the standard over here, we're supposed to be at 60 to 65%. So they got a little work to do. Gross margin is the exact opposite of this number. So they're at 32%. That means they're making 32 cents on the dollar, at least when it comes to prime. This doesn't include uh, a lot of other factors in, in your expenses, but when it comes to this, this number should be 35 to 40%, so they're a little low on that, obviously, because this one's a little high. We want to get this number down, profits go up, gross margin goes up. It's automatic when you do that. And then I keep talking about analyzing it and fixing it. Why are we doing it on a weekly basis instead of monthly? You can identify on a week to week, you can find the patterns to see if it's staying the same or it's going up and down. This is gonna fluctuate a little bit on a weekly basis. On a monthly basis, it'll be a little more consistent over the months. You might have ordered way too much food or liquor this week because you were behind and you were low on stock, so you, got to, you had to order a lot. So this number might go up just based on that. Maybe you had a lot more employee staff because you thought you're going to be busier and then you didn't get as busy as you thought. So that's why it went up. But if next week you come out and this is at 71%, the week after it's at 69%, it's not going down. Okay. If it goes to 62% next week, which it very well might, it's going to fluctuate, then you're probably okay. You need to watch that number week to week to see if it's going up and down. Then you got to make adjustments. If it's up in the high 60s or low 70s on a weekly basis, you need to do something. You got to cut labor. You've got to not order as much. Maybe you're ordering way too much. There's 
dead stock problems that people got all this stuff in their liquor room or the food, the kitchen's ordering too much and it's spoiling, you've got to cut into that stuff. So if that number is high on a weekly basis, that's when you know you have a problem. If you're not doing this, you have no idea where you stand. That's why we do inventory management. That's why we systemize in every area so you can see what's going on, fix those problems, systemize it, the profits come in like magic. And that's it for the weekly sales and prime cost report. Pretty simple, very similar to the daily cash report. Uh, all you gotta do is fill in your cost of goods sold and your labor at the bottom and you get the prime cost on a weekly basis, which is really powerful. So we're only using these four templates. I chose these four templates specifically so you can track the most impactful areas in your business to fix, all right? There's 100 templates out there you could use. You're not using 100 templates. I can tell you that right now. We're just doing daily which you have to do anyway. And then we have two weeklies, the prime cost, we're doing cash flow next. And then we have the monthly, the profit loss statement, which everyone needs to do. So that's it, those four, very simple, step-by-step. -step. If you systemize and stay on top of these things, you're gonna have a more profitable business and you're gonna have more time. So that's gonna do it for the day. Make sure to head to video three. We're doing, going over cash flow management, which is very important. You don't want your employees' checks bouncing. You wanna see if you can pay for an event. You can spot where your cash is. You can anticipate future events. Very important. Again, go to therealbarman.com resources page. You can find all these templates. There's a link down in the description that you can click on. And there's also the link to the finance course. So that's gonna do it for now. I'll see you at the next video. Thanks for being here. I'm Dave Allred, The Real Barman. I'm out of here.